Welcome. It's nice to have you here. So today I'm going to share with you the main reason why you're stuck and how you can help yourself to get unstuck. Uh, it's the it's really the the number one reason why people are uh, not happy and successful. So if you want to be successful, this is the 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 thing that you have to take care of. Uh, and there's no way around that. So that's what I'm going to share with you today, and it's going to make a big difference in your life. In order for it to make a big difference in your life, though, a couple of things. One, you actually have to hear it, uh, and you have to receive it. So I encourage you, you know, we all have our, our ideas about things that we, we already believe, our beliefs. And we have to tell the truth, which is that if those beliefs are working for us, then uh, we would be getting the results that we want. So either the beliefs that we have are wrong or they're at least incomplete. And so I encourage you just to be willing to set those aside for now and receive what's on offer here and just receive it sincerely and honestly. So there's no danger in doing so. There's no harm in being receptive. Uh, there's a lot of harm in being uh, closed off, you know, because a lot of the time we think we have to protect ourselves by being uh, walled off. But actually what we do to ourselves is we make ourselves fragile because we're holding so much tension. Whereas when we're receptive, then we're not holding on to anything. So there's a lot of flexibility. There's a lot of uh, uh, resilience. Okay. So just be willing to actually receive, and then you can use your intellect to actually look at it intelligently. I'm not saying be brainwashed, um, but do be open to brainwashing yourself because maybe maybe your brain needs a little washing, um, like all of ours, right? We, we do take in a lot of stuff that we hold on to that's not particularly helpful. So, so there's that. Okay, so one more thing before I actually get to what it is that uh, is holding people back from being successful in life. The number one thing, the first and foremost thing that's holding people back from being successful in life. And by successful, I mean um, in all ways, but primarily it comes down to being happy, being fulfilled, okay? Um, before I get to that, uh, one more thing I wanna say, which is that Take a look and see that what you really want actually is to be happy. And again, that if your present beliefs are working for you completely, then you already have that. You already experienced that completely and fully without doubt. You have complete confidence in that. You know absolutely that that is within you, that, that you are the source of that and that it's in, unalienable or inalienable. So if you have any doubts about that, if you have any confusion about that, if that's not absolutely crystal clear for you, then just um, tell the truth about that. And there's no shame in that, but just, I'm just, in, again, encouraging you to let the guard down because I, what I've noticed, and the reason I'm saying all this is because I noticed that some uh, some people come to these and they have their guard up and so they can't receive and they think they know things that uh, are hurting them. Or they have ideas about things that are true, but only partially true. And so then they're not receiving the fullness of the truth because they're clinging to a partial truth. So with all that said, now let me get to the number one thing that's holding you back from being successful in life, which means being happy, healthy, fulfilled, satisfied, uh, all of those things. Okay, so when I tell you this, this will be shocking to some people. Some of you, it won't be shocking to at all. But some people, this will be really shocking to. And so just be prepared that your mind might recoil and say, oh, that's not possible. That's You'll make some excuse, you know, oh, well, that's too stupid or it's too simple or it's too this or it's too that or, well, that doesn't apply to me. But again, be willing to actually receive it. Don't reject it out of hand because you say, I already know the truth before I get there, before I even receive it. I already know everything. Okay. So actually receive it and take a look at it sincerely. 
Okay, so here it is. You don't know what you want. Okay, so for some of you, like I say, that's shocking. For some of you, it's not shocking because you already have heard me say that. But in any case, actually let it in in a new way because there's something really valuable there for you because to the degree that you're not having the results that you want, the truth is you don't know what you want because when you know what you want, it's yours. This is actually just a law. This is how it works. I want to say one thing now before I elaborate on that and go into a little detail about how you can uh, start to know what it is you want and why knowing what you want is so important. Because I want to just clarify one thing, because I also know that some people have an objection to this because they believe that desire is a problem inherently. And they believe they know that because they've read that or heard that because they've, uh, you know, been around and they've heard Buddhists say it or they've heard whoever say that uh, desire is the uh, cause of all suffering. But really, the truth is that desire is the cause of all expression. And some expression is suffering. So it may be true that desire is the cause of all suffering. But see, it's a partial truth. It's a half truth. Half truths are very dangerous because when we hold a half truth as the whole truth, then we cut ourselves off from the whole truth. So just understand this. Desire is the cause of all expression. Desire is the cause of all manifestation. Desire is the cause of all life happening. People want to know why. Why, 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 why? You know, like a two-year-old, why? Want to know why, why, why about everything? The answer is desire. It's all desire. Everything is desire. Desire is not bad. Desire is simply the cause of all creation. Desire is the cause of all manifestation, all expression. Some of that is very painful. Some of that is what we would call suffering. But some of it is not. Some of it is fulfilling. Some of it is harmonious. Some of it is very happy and wonderful. So it's, it's just, again, a half-truth to believe that desire is the cause of all suffering. Desire is simply the cause of creation. And if you say that I should have no desire, you're fooling yourself because you are desire. So as long as you consider yourself to be anything, as long as you can experience yourself at all, as long as you have any sense of yourself, then that which you consider yourself to be, that is desire. It's nothing other than desire. All of this is desire. Every individual is desire. Every self-expression is desire. Every lifetime is desire. All of it is desire. So if you deny that you have des to, if you deny that you have desire, or if you deny that you should have desire, then you end up in a very, 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 very difficult place. I don't know how many berries that was, but it's a lot because it's a very difficult place. Because you get yourself stuck, and it comes back right around to what I, where I started with this, which is you don't know what you want. If you don't know what you want then you cannot fulfill it. And if you don't fulfill it, then you still have the desire, but you're in denial of it, and you certainly haven't fulfilled it, which means you're unsatisfied, unfulfilled. Hopefully you see the problem in that. Because a lot of people who say, oh, well, uh, desire is suffering, the people who have that belief have that belief because they're looking for a way out of their suffering. Just tell the truth about it. People don't come to that belief unless they want a way out of their suffering. They only can come to that because they perceive that they have suffering. They want a way out. And in their search for a way out, they came to somebody somewhere some, telling them desire is the cause of all suffering. And they say, oh, well, that kind of makes sense. Well, I guess I should have no desire because desire is the cause of all my suffering. So what are they doing? Well, they're creating a kind of spiritual constipation. And then they wonder why they're feeling so bad. Now, I can know all this because I've been there, done that. So, you know, it's you're in good company if you consider me to be good company. <laughs> but look, I'm just describing something to you to help you. Uh, that's all, the entire point of this is just to help you, to help you 
to actually find out what the real solution is. So you're wanting a way out of your suffering. This is the answer. You have to see that you have desire, you are desire, and the desire must be satisfied. It must be fulfilled. If you don't, if you deny that you have desire, or if you deny that it's okay to have desire, then you will not progress in any way. You will stay stuck exactly where you are, repeating exactly the same pain, which is, by way, the definition of suffering. So you can help yourself out tremendously by just taking a look. So I'm not asking that you believe any of this. I'm just asking that you look. I'm presenting you with what I sincerely know to be the truth. But you can only know that for yourself when you look and find that out for yourself. So don't just believe it. Take a look. But see if it's possible for you, which it is, that you have desire. And see that you want to and must satisfy, resolve that desire because that is the aim of the desire. Suppressing it won't work. So this will get us to the this will get us to a good starting point. If you can't get to that point, then you, you can't even start because you'll just be in denial. Uh, so you really, really, really have to do that. I'm using a lot of uh, I'm augmenting things many times today. I, I guess I should say I'm augmenting things many, many, many times today. Uh, but you you need to get to that starting point by admitting to yourself that you have desire. And whether that's good or bad actually turns out to be irrelevant. It just is. So you know, to judge creation as good or bad is really s silly because it simply is. Whether it's good or bad um, doesn't really matter. It is. So you want to just at least tell the truth about it. Creation is, and desire therefore is. I have desire, period. So denying it will not help me. Saying that I shouldn't will not help me. If saying that it shouldn't would work, then uh, I would not be here presently. <laughs> I would be in, I would be in some very different uh very high state of consciousness. Because I'm speaking to you from where I am because of my own path, because I've been there, done that, tried that, tried the denial. And I'm telling you from experience, it doesn't work. So we have to get to that point where we can say, okay, I admit I have desire. I have some judgments or opinions about that maybe, but those judgments and opinions don't actually help me. All I need to do is just admit that, I, that it's there. The desire is there. Great. Now I can begin. Now I can do something useful to help myself. So that's the great news here is that you have the ability to help yourself. Nobody else can do it. If you're waiting for God to fix your problems, you will keep on waiting. Because you have free will. You have been endowed with free will. You have to exercise that to help yourself. Then you will get the results that you want. So you have to just say, great, this is wonderful. Now I see that I have desire. I can satisfy it. I have that ability. The desire exists in me because inherent in it is the capacity for its own fulfillment. Now you just start with that much. You don't have to know anything more than that. If you know something more than that, maybe that's useful. But if you don't know anything more than that, that's okay. All you have to do to start is admit that you have some desire. You don't have to know much about the desire. You just have to admit that you have some desire. And if you, you know, for, for example, if you know that you want not to suffer, isn't that a desire? You see what I'm talking about when it's the, the silliness and the um, uh, har uh, harm, the self-harm the self, the self -harm of denying the desire when there's clearly a desire, if you desire to stop suffering. 
to say you shouldn't have a desire if you desire to stop suffering. And who doesn't desire to stop suffering? Everybody does. So that's what I'm saying. If you can just admit that much, you can start. So you don't have to know more than that. All you have to know is that you have desire. And I guess to add to that, or to repeat, you have to know that you have desire and you have to be willing to accept it. Stop fighting with it. Stop denying it. Stop rejecting it. Stop the the silliness of, of this um, suppression. And I, I understand that doesn't apply to everybody. But I'm just repeating it because it does apply to some people and it applies in a very important way. So I'm just pointing it out because I want to help people not to suffer unnecessarily. Because like I say, you'll just keep going round and round and round and round and round with that one but you'll never get anywhere. You'll just stay stuck. So you have to first admit, I have a desire. If nothing else, it's the desire to not suffer. And that desire simply is, it's not good or bad, or maybe it is good or bad, but it's irrelevant where it's whether it's good or bad because it simply is. And the nature of it is that it must be resolved. And so I'm going to now actually apply myself because that's how I can use my power to help myself. And that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help myself. I'm not here for anything else. You're not here for anything else. If you were here for anything else, you know, avatars are here for something else. But you just tell the truth. You're not an avatar, at least not presently. At least not in your own, right? You don't recognize yourself as such. So forget about saving humanity. Forget about, you know, doing selfless stuff. Just help yourself. That's enough. That's a very good start. Help yourself. So you are empowered to do that. You alone have the ability to do it. It's your duty, it's your responsibility, and it's your joy to do so. Because when you do so, life gets better. It really does. You can be much, much, much happier. See, there I did it again. Much, much, much happier. You can experience so much happiness, fulfillment, peace, harmony, joy, bliss. It's real. You can experience it. Not just in quiet moments, although there too, but you can experience it as a living reality in every moment of your life because that's what you're meant to do. But in order to do that, you have to know what you want. And as I've said, the starting point to know what you want is you have to first admit that you want something. You don't have to know what it is. You just have to know that you admit something. That you, you, you have to admit that you want something. So that, with that as the starting point, then how can you actually know what you want? Well, you give your attention to it. So you know, <laughs> some of you will already know this, but it's one of those fundamental universal laws. It's the law of attention. Where you put your attention, that's where the energy goes. That's what grows. You don't have to believe it. Just check it out. Just take a look in your own life and see the truth of it. Whatever you give your attention to, that grows. Because that's how creation is working there's a desire. The desire aims your attention. You put your attention on it. It, it. The more attention it gets, the more it grows, the more real it seems. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger, realer and realer and realer. It's only ever consciousness. But it seems more real and seems bigger because you keep giving attention to it. So if you want to know what you want, put your attention on that. Put your attention on what do I want. If you don't do that, then you'll have the same kind of experience that 99% of the people have. Maybe that's a little uh, harsh. Maybe, let's say, 95% of the people, somewhere between 95 and 99% of the people have the experience of not getting greater clarity on what they want. And now, some people will object to that, and they'll say, but plenty of people are putting plenty of attention on what they want. I will say, no, that's not true. Plenty of people are putting plenty of attention on what they're mindlessly accepting that they want, but they haven't actually looked to find out what they really want, okay? Because on the one hand, there's this problem of rejecting or denying that you desire anything, which I've already uh, gone into excessively, so I won't I won't go into that any further. But on the other side, there's the um, uh, the other way that this plays out, which is that people mindlessly give their attention to all kinds of things that they think they want, but none of it is what they actually want. Because, look, remember, all of this is desire. So there's plenty of desire to go around. All you have to do is 
open your eyes or ears and you know you have to open your eyes or ears i mean it's just coming to you psychically all the time you're swimming in a psychic soup of desire but most of that desire is not actually authentically yours plenty of people are very happy for you to accept the desire that they tell you is yours right i mean that's how plenty of people are making their money how most of the money is made is by giving you a desire, but it's a false desire. It's not your desire. So just check it out. Most people squander their lives running around, doing all kinds of things, pursuing all kinds of desires, but they're not actually authentically their desires. So you've got people who are going to school. You've got people who are working all kinds of jobs to make all kinds of money. You've got people who are chasing after relationships. You've got people who are doing all kinds of things. And they're not actually any closer to being happy and fulfilled, more at peace, more satisfied, more um, having more self-knowledge. All of which is the, the natural consequence of satisfying your authentic desire. Okay, When you satisfy your authentic desire, you experience more peace, more satisfaction, more harmony, more self-knowledge. All of that happens naturally as a result of satisfying your authentic desire. But if you're trying to satisfy desires that are not authentically yours, you're not going to get any of those results. All you're going to get is more desire, but not your desire, just more mindless desire because you're just caught in a stream of other people's desires. So again, you know, the, the, the idea that desire is the cause of suffering is true, but it's only half true. If you're just mindlessly accepting other people's desires, then you're going to chase after desire endlessly. And that's a form of suffering. But that does not mean that all desire is suffering because authentic desire leads to its own resolution, which is yourself, which is what you're really looking for, which is deep satisfaction, peace, harmony, freedom, abundance, clarity, all of that. So in order to achieve those results as long as you have a desire it's not going to work for you to just be a recluse or put it another way it will be very challenging for you you can still achieve it as a recluse but it will be more challenging or it can be more challenging it depends you have to have the proper knowledge i mean it share with you the proper knowledge so that you could do it as a recluse, but you don't need to do it as a recluse. See, that's the that's the beauty of it. In fact, it's easier, it's hard for some people to believe, it's easier to do it in the world. So here's how you do it. I've already given you some a very important clue in this. You have to put your attention on what you want. Now, at first, you don't have great clarity about what you want, because as I at least implied, if not stated explicitly, when you know what you want with crystal clarity, it's yours and you experience all the benefits, all the benefits of that. So until you have that crystal clarity, which is another way of saying until you experience that deep satisfaction and contentment, peace, harmony, freedom, then you have more work to do putting your attention on what you want so you get greater clarity about it. So the work really is just putting your attention on what you want so that it gets clearer to you. So I'm going to give you a process that you can use. Simple process is a very powerful process. Just write down what you want. Now, I laugh because I know that many people, they'll hear that and they'll, on YouTube, they'll just, they'll, they'll go to the next video because they'll say, oh, that's too stupid. That won't work. Or I've already tried that and it didn't work for me. So here's the thing. I shrug my shoulders and roll my eyes because I, I should have more, I do have more compassion. I don't mean to indicate that I have a lack of compassion because I've been there, done that. I'm speaking to, I'm shrugging my shoulders and rolling my eyes because I really understand firsthand the the painful consequences of doing that because I've done that. I did that for many, many years. 
you know, the, the truth is not complicated. The truth is not difficult, actually. And it's because it, it's so simple and relatively easy that it remains elusive because people believe that, well, they have all kinds of ideas about the truth and those ideas don't usually match up with the reality. And so it's right here, right here in front of them, but they keep looking somewhere else because they say, well, this couldn't be it. But I promise you what I'm telling you is the truth. If you accept this and you just do it, you will get the results. You will get the results. It's not a, there's no doubt about it whatsoever. If you do it, you get the results. It's like, if you put one foot in front of the other, you will be walking. It, there's no question about it. You just keep doing it. You might say, well, I'm not very good at it. I'm not a very good walker. I'm stumbling. I'm tripping. I'm having problems with it. Okay, but how are you going to get better? Put one foot in front of the other. Same here. You might not get the immediately get the results that you think you want immediately. But if you just do it, you will get better at it, which means you will get better results. You just have to keep applying yourself to it. And there is, I don't know of any simpler, uh, more direct method to get clarity on what you want than what I'm telling you. And I don't know of anything more important than getting clarity on what you want. Because if you don't know what you want, you will continue to go round and round and round in suffering. I'm just going to, one more time, I'm going to harp on this thing one more time because I know there's somebody out there who they still need a little bit of a nudge on this one point because they're going to say, but desire is bad. Desire is the cause of my suffering. I should be doing, I should be uh, doing some kind of uh, oneness meditation. I should be dissolving all boundaries. Desire is not the enemy. Desire is what gave rise to this life. If you deny it, then you're living in that denial and you cannot expect to get better results because you have to actually face the truth of what this is and you have to work with it intelligently. If you don't do that, then how can you just take a look and tell the truth? How can you expect to get better results if you're in denial about what this is? There is desire. You have desire. Again, bringing it back to you have a desire not to suffer. You might have judgments about that, but the judgments are irrelevant because the desire exists. That's what's giving rise to this life. In order to resolve that, well, let me take a step back. To When you resolve that, you bring yourself back to that source of oneness. Oneness is the source. All of this is oneness. There's only oneness. There's nothing other than oneness. You can't create oneness. You can't produce oneness. You're not going to get to oneness. Oneness is the reality. It's the fundamental fact that's always here. What is uh, distracting you from that is unresolved desire. Suppressing unresolved desire does not resolve the desire. Suppressing unresolved desire just suppresses the desire. Resolve the desire. Step one, admit that you have it. Step two, get clear on what the desire is. I'll get to step three later. Okay. So you have to give your attention to what you want so that you will get clearer on what you want. Because when you have crystal clarity on what you want, I'm, I've said this before, but I'm repeating it. You will have it because that's how this works. Remember, I said that all of this is already only oneness and it is manifesting as desire. There is nothing else happening here. I mean, we could talk about it in other terms. I'm not denying that, but I'm saying if we want to keep it really, really simple, then this is about as simple as it can get. This is all consciousness, or we could say all oneness, and it is expressing as desire. That's all that's happening here. There's nothing else. So when you have crystal clarity on what the desire is, it's manifest because that's what the manifestation is, is the clarity of the desire. So everything that you are experiencing presently as real, everything that you say, this is real, it's because you have that level of clarity about it. Now, you might not say, but I don't desire it. Ah, but you did. 
you did enough to keep putting your attention on it so that it grew and became more and more real for you. See, desire is not necessarily about something that you like. Have you noticed that? Sometimes you have desires for things that you don't like only because of a lack of adequate awareness about things. Hence the importance of getting real, real clarity on what you what you want. Okay. So you you have to be clear about what you really want in a positive sense, not just what's already what's already has momentum because it's been created, but you have to get clear on what is it I truly, 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 truly want. And then keep giving your attention to that because when that is crystal clear, it is real for you. There is nothing else going on. It's not that when it's crystal clear for you, then something else. So this is step three, okay? Is that when you get crystal clarity on what you want, it is. It is real, it is actualized and it's resolved because when you do that, you have claimed your power. I've said this before, I'm going to say it again now, until you have, until you know who you are and claim that power, then you will have anxiety, you will have doubts, you will have fears. You can't help it because you will, you will live with the superstition and the anxiety that there's something apart from you that has power over you. Only when you know truly who you are and what your powers are, do you banish all fear. It's only possible when you know who you are and you know your powers and you exercise them. Because again, until that point, you'll still have the anxiety that there's something apart from you that has power over you. When you have, when you go through this process of knowing what you want and you put enough tension on it for long enough that you get crystal clarity about what it is, it is, it's manifest because that's what it actually is. And in that moment, you have total clarity about your power because you have exercised it from A to Z. You've actually done it. You've seen how it works with no stone unturned. You know exactly how you did it. So then you no longer believe that there's something out there who has power over you because you know who you are and what the power is. You know that you are consciousness. You know that your power is your attention, and that's it. You have all, you. nothing can harm you. So that's the power of knowing what you want. So I'm describing to you a very simple yet very powerful process that you can use that will help you with this. And the only catch is that it only works if you use it. If you don't use it, clearly it can't work. So again, I know there are people out there who will say, oh, that can't work. Yeah, it won't work for you because you won't work it. But if I promise you this, if you work it, it will work for you because it's just a fact. Where you put your attention, that's where the energy goes, that grows. If you put your attention on what you want, you will get more clarity about what you want. As you gain more clarity about what you want, it becomes manifest, it's realized then you know who you are and what your powers are. You banish all fear. You experience harmony, peace, fulfillment, happiness, bliss. Hopefully you see how this works. Hopefully you see the power of how simple it is. You don't have to do so many things. I won't deny there are some things that can enhance the results. Some of you know that. So I'm not saying that I'm not saying that that's not true because it is true. There are definitely things that will enhance it. But at its foundation, this is it. If you don't do this, then all the things that you do to enhance it won't work because enhancements don't work if there's not a core. So this has to be the core. You have to put your attention on what you want. So I'm suggesting write down what you want. And don't censor yourself. Just write it down. Because if you if you censor yourself, you're going to censor yourself out of the clarity of what you want. So just write it down. Just write down what you want. And your mind will try to censor you. It will say, oh, but that's too stupid. Oh, but that's infantile. Oh, but that's immature. Oh, that's this. Oh, that's that. That's impossible. Whatever. It's going to come up with all the excuses. You just say, look, what's the harm in just writing it down? 
So what if it's stupid? So what if it's infantile? So what if it's not even your desire? Just write it down. That's just step one in this process of the writing. Okay, so you write it down. Just write it down. Write down what you want. Step two, prioritize. Now, this requires a tremendous amount of self-honesty. Because again, your mind is going to try to talk you out of things. Now, as you go through this, you're going to find there are many things that you think you want that you've written down that you don't actually want because they're borrowed desires. Your mind is going to tell you, oh, I want to have a PhD. One in a million people wants to have a PhD authentically, and maybe, maybe more than that, but probably not. The other 99% of the people who want to have, think they want to have a PhD, they don't actually want to have a PhD. So when you write the thing down, you know, whatever it is, I want, I want the car, I want the house, I want the spouse, I want the uh, vacations in Bermuda, I want the yacht, I want the, um, you know, I want millions of followers on social media, whatever you think you want. You write it all down, then you go through the list. And you look and you see what's actually yours and what's not. This is what requires tremendous self-honesty. But you just look and see, look, if this was my last moment of this lifetime, is this thing really important? Do I actually care about this thing? Am I going to have regrets about this thing? Is, is this thing going to continue as a desire that's going to bring me back around again so that I can satisfy that desire? If so, guess what? That's a real desire. If not, then guess what? You get to let it go. You have that power. Just let it go. You will immediately experience greater liberation. You see, you are bound by all of your fa false desires. You're liberated by satisfying truthfully all of your true desires. So you're writing down all of your desires uncensored, then you're going to go through and you're going to find out which of these are truly my desires. If this was my last moment in this life, do I actually want this thing? And your, your conditioned mind can't know the truth about this because your conditioned mind only knows what it already thinks it knows. But it doesn't know the deeper truth. It doesn't know, your conditioned mind only knows what it's been conditioned to in this lifetime. It doesn't know your soul agenda. It doesn't know why you came here. So if you just turn to your conditioned mind, your conditioned mind is going to tell you to, you know, what it thinks is are the right desires, but it's not going to be able to know what are the true desires. It's going to say, oh, that design, that, oh, you want a yacht? Oh, really? That's stupid. And for 99 plus percent of people, it is a stupid desire that's not really theirs. But for the 1%, it's real. And if your conditioned mind says, oh, that's stupid, cross it off the list. If it's your sole agenda, then you're just going to come back for another lifetime to get the yacht. Why not get it now? And I know somebody out there is going to say, but nobody could have an authentic desire for a yacht. Well, okay, in some sense that's true, but in another sense, Somebody has that desire as an authentic desire. Maybe there, of course, there's always a deeper thing underneath that, but maybe that's the particular vehicle for the expression of that deeper desire. Is it essential to get the yacht to get to the deeper desire? Probably not, but maybe that's the easiest path for that person. So why, why waste your time judging it? Just get clear, okay? So I'm saying... Write down all your desires uncensored, then go back through the list and get and ask yourself, is this really truly my desire or not? If it's truly my desire, then if this is my last moment in life, I want this thing. I'll, I'll have regrets if I don't satisfy this. If it's not my true desire, then I don't care. I easily let it go because it's my last moment. I'm not going to hold on to it, whatever. So you let it go now. Don't wait until your deathbed, right? Let it go now. Liberate yourself now. Immediately going through this exercise, you are going to be liberated of an enormous burden. I hope I hope people understand the power of this. That I'm giving you gold. This will dramatically change your life for the better, 
anybody who does this sincerely, anybody who does it insincerely, it's not going to make any difference at all. So don't waste your time, <laughs> but do it sincerely and it will change your life. You have to follow through on it. You know, if you do it once and then you throw it away and you forget about it, it's not going to make a big de deal in your life. But if you do it and you, you see the real power of it and you stay with that truth and you continue to give your attention, well, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but if the next step is to keep giving your attention to what really matters, okay? When you do that, then things really start to change. Okay, so you're writing down everything you want, uncensored, then you go back through and you get clear on what are your true desires and what are you, what, what are not. So when you do that, then you're gonna come up with a pretty short list because you don't have that many true desires, handful. I mean, we could say at the core, there's only one true desire, but in order, but that true desire is to know yourself. <laughs> And in order to know yourself, you have to know your unique, your unique expression, which are your, your desires. So you've got a handful of authentic desires, whatever they are. One, two, three, maybe four, maybe five. But you've got to prioritize now. What what is the what is what's the most important of these? And if you can't prioritize, then you're making it a lot harder for yourself. If you prioritize, it will be easier. If you don't prioritize, then it will be harder, but you can still succeed. In which case, you can skip the prioritization, and then you're just going to, every day, you're going to read that list of the things that you want. Now, most people will say, oh, that's too simple. It couldn't work. Yeah, most people won't get the results because they won't do it because they'll say it's too simple. It won't work. And they'll go off looking for something else. And then five years, 10 years, 20 years later, they'll still be getting the same results because they'll still be doing the same stuff, just looking. When you actually do this thing, you will get the results. So you've got your list, your short list of the things that are actually your desires. Again, you have to trust your intuition on this you have to trust your gut you have to trust when you do this little exercise and you say if this is my last moment in this life what really matters to me trust that if you talk yourself out of it then you're you're just going to hold yourself back stay stuck just trust your short list if possible prioritize it so you know what's the most important thing to you and maybe it's just what's most important right now. So when I say prioritize that, I mean really prioritize according to what's most important right now. Because if, just as an example, if you're, um, you know, st struggling in uh, an unfulfilling career where you just feel stuck in a dead end, do you think that's going to have a negative impact on your life? Yes, it will. Is that going to have a significant negative impact on your life? Yes, it will. Is that going to touch every area of your life? Yes, it will. So if that's weighing on you and you want to have a, you want to be expressing yourself in a fulfilling career and that's a high priority for you right now, then you need to give attention to that. Because getting that sorted out is going to help you tremendously. I'm not telling you that. I can prioritize for you. I don't know what your priorities are. I'm just giving you an example. But if possible, you prioritize your list. If not, then you just work with it unprioritized, but you've got your list, your short list. So you're going to work with your short list. Every day, the basic exercise is this. Every day, read your list. If you do that, you will be giving your attention to what you want. Can you see that's true? That's the power of it. If you just do that every day, you will be putting your attention on what you want. When you put your attention on something, it grows. So your clarity about what it is that you want will grow. Because at first, you don't know in tremendous detail what it is that you want. If you knew already in tremendous detail, you would have it. It would be actualized. You would already have it resolved. You would already be experiencing that satisfaction. 
Because you don't experience that satisfaction presently, it means that you don't have that clarity, which means you need to put your attention on it. So you start with your short list, which tells you, I want uh, you know, a loving relationship, as an example, if that's something you want. Okay. So you don't really know much more than that. Because presently, all you know, actually, is what you don't want, right? You know, well, I don't want the kinds of relationships that I've experienced that as unsatisfying. So you need to give your attention every day to, I want a, a, a deeply satisfying relationship, deeply satisfying, loving relationship, whatever it is. Okay, I'm just using that as an example. It doesn't have to be that. This works for anything, everything, the yacht, the whatever, the, the money, the... Uh, creative expression, you want to make music, write a novel, whatever it is, you want to anything, 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 anything. If you're in doubt about it, then just know this works for anything, everything. Okay, but I'm using this one thing as an example. So if you read that every day, I, I desire, okay, it's best if you put it in present tense as though it's already the case. Why? Because you're putting your attention on it, it grows. Well, what do you want to grow? Do you want it to grow that you will have? Or do you want it to grow that you do have? And clearly, you want it to grow that you do have. You want the satisfaction. You want the resolution now. So you do have. So I have a deeply satisfying, loving, nurturing, nourishing relationship that I experience as harmonious, peaceful, uh, encouraging, et cetera, whatever it is for you. Okay. So you you read that every day. And when you do that, you try to imagine what that actually is. So you're just imagining it. Just in my imagination, I have this. Well, what is that? See it, feel it. And again, most people will say, oh, that's, that won't work. It won't work if you don't do it. If you do it, it will work because I'm just telling you how things actually work. It's just a law. So if you do it, you will get the results. You put your attention on it, and now because you're putting your attention on it, now your mind is starting to work. It's saying, well, I'm not sure what that is exactly. So what is it, right? This is what your mind has to do. It's, it's like, well, what is it? I know, okay, that's great. I want a loving, harmonious relationship, but what, what exactly is that? Where, you know, where, where are we? What are we doing? What, what does it feel like? You know, what, what is, what is the impact on my life? What is, what is the meaning for me? You know, how does that support me? What am, how, how am I self-expressed in my life as a result of that? You know, you just have to start to see that. Because that's just, uh, it's just, those are just some words. You have to actually get clear on what it really is. So you keep putting your attention on it day after day, after day, after day, after day, after day, after day, until it gets clearer and clearer and clearer and clearer and clearer. And then there it is. It's real. And again, it won't work if you don't work it. But if you do work it, it will work. It does work. How long do you have to work it? Until you're satisfied. Don't stop short. And so there you go. That's the basic process. If you do that, you will succeed. It's the one, the one reason why people, the number one reason why people stay stuck, unsatisfied, unhappy, unfulfilled is because they don't know what they want. How can you help yourself? Put your attention on what you want. Do it every day. I've given a simple process. Write it down, sift through it to figure out what's actually yours. Then if possible, prioritize it, then read it every day. If you prioritize it, then keep it to your top priorities. If there's only if there's one thing that clearly stands out among all of them as the number one thing by far, then just do that one. Why? Because what you put your attention on, that's where the energy goes. That's what grows. So if you put your attention on the one thing, then 100% of your attention goes to that one thing. And so that will grow the most. If you put your attention on two things, then it's divided among two. If you put it on three, it's divided among three, etc. So that's, again, the power. If you prioritize, then you can determine what are the most important things to put your attention on. And maybe one thing stands out. Maybe two things stand out. Maybe three things stand out. It's best not to, if possible, not to give it to more than three things. Because as you do, 
then your energy gets diluted so much that your results are dramatically reduced, slowed down. It's the law still works. It's still going to give you results, but it will be so diluted that you will get much slower results. So best if you can prioritize and put your attention just on those things that are most important, number one, two, or three top things. Now, I'll just say one more thing. As you're going through that process, remember it's how much you sincerely put your attention on it. It's not enough just to read it and say, oh, I read it, it's not working. You have to do it sincerely. What does that mean? It means you read it, then you have to actually engage with it. Okay, what is that? What does it feel like? Who are the people? What are the expressions on their faces? What are we doing? What does this mean for me? When I have that, what am, what am I doing in my life? What how do I feel about that? How do you know what is my how am I feeling purposeful, excited, enthusiastic, peaceful, calm, happy? You know, whatever it is, you have to feel into that, see that, get clarity about that. It's not an overnight process. So if you say, well, it's not working because it's not, I've done it for a week and I'm still not getting the results. Uh, okay, don't give up. Just stay with it. I promise you it works. Because that is how things work. This is the simplest, most direct method. It will, it does work. Just do it. Um, okay, so another thing, and this will dramatically help you. Your present experience, your present experience of reality is based on the same process. You've already been doing this. You've been giving your attention, building it out. It becomes more and more real. Now, as that happens, it becomes your, your experience of reality is largely unconscious and subconscious. Just see the truth of that. You know, like you, you experience as reality that you walk if you walk, I, I know not everybody walks, but if you walk then, or take any example of something that you do, you experience that as real, but that's happening subconsciously. You're not consciously processing the walking or the talking or the eating or the, any of those things. It's happening subconsciously and unconsciously um, because that's the bulk of your experience is composed of the subconscious and unconscious. So in order for something to filter into the subconscious and unconscious levels, it has to become kind of, uh, well, it has to become mechanical. So there's, there's a certain, there's a trade-off. There's a certain, there's an aliveness there that's lost. And that's not bad. That's just, again, it's a trade-off. That's how it works. So that's fine, but Keep in mind what the, the implications of that are, is that there are all kinds of things that prop it up. And those things offer resistance to change. That's a positive thing. That's how creation is sustained, is that there's resistance to change. Because if there was no resistance to change, then nothing could take hold, right? It would be like a plant without roots. It would be here today, gone tomorrow. The only reason there's sustenance is because it has roots. Because that's how it can sustain itself. So... It, for things to be in the subconscious and unconscious, it has those roots, which uh, provide the resistance to change so that the thing can be sustained. So that's positive for the things that we want. It is a challenge for the things that we don't want. So we've already created many things that we don't want. When we're putting our attention on what we do want is necessarily going to mean change for the things that we don't want. Just understand the implication of this. That means there will be resistance met. If you then just give up, you say, oh, it's not working. You're just not an understanding and you can't, can't get better results. But if you say, oh, of course, there's resistance because there's already something here that's being sustained, then you can work with it intelligently. So understand that that resistance will manifest in a variety of ways. Don't have a lot of time to go into all the details here, but I'll just give you one obvious way that it manifests, which is as beliefs. Okay, so you want to pay attention to your limiting beliefs. The limiting beliefs will surface as you're putting your attention on what you want, because you'll say, as an example, 
okay, uh, go back. I'll use the same example. I want a loving, har harmonious relationship. So I experience a, har a loving, harmonious relationship now. Now, in my imagination, in my imagination takes some of the resistance away. Because if you if you don't add that, then your mind says, well, I've only experienced it. That's not true. But if you say in my imagination, then it removes a lot of resistance because in your imagination, you can experience that if you choose. Okay, so in my imagination, I have an experience, a loving, harmonious relationship now. Great. So you're now visualizing that, trying to see, the, understand, and feel the details of it. And your mind's going to start saying things like, oh, but it never works out for me. I never can find the right person. There's, you know, there's nobody good out there. Uh, it's too difficult. Okay, so these things are going to surface. These are the limiting beliefs. So become aware of them. I'll give you, I'm throwing all that at you. But if you can make use of it, it will be very helpful to you. Just keep a running list of those beliefs. Don't try to knock them all down in, in one day. It will be overwhelming to you. But you can address one a day. And I'm not going to give you uh, a, a detailed process for how to do that. There are many different processes. But I'll just give you one simple process, which if you do it, can be very effective. Number one, when you have to write it down, you're making it conscious. So that in and of itself starts a very powerful process of undoing. Because remember, those beliefs are actually at a subconscious and unconscious level. Those are those roots that keep the thing in place. Become When you make it conscious, you uh, open it up, make it susceptible to change. So just writing it down, putting it into language makes it more susceptible to change. So right there, you've done something powerful, but now you have to look at it and question whether it's actually true. So this is just gonna work mostly for the low hanging fruit meaning those things that are already relatively easy to let go of. But some of them, you when you've actually written it down, you've had to go through that process of making it conscious, you'll be able to just ask, is it true? And you'll be able to see it's not true. Because most, I mean, actually none of the beliefs are ever true. Um, and But oftentimes what happens is that the beliefs are, gen are so generalized uh, and and put in absolute terms that when you see them consciously, you'll have to recognize it's not true because it will say something like, uh, using this example, you know, like there, there's, uh, uh, you know, all, all, all people are uh, cruel. Okay. How could that be true? Can't be true. Maybe some people are cruel. You've had experiences of cruelty from some people. But it gets generalized as all people are cruel. So when you see that it's actually the generalized claim is not true, then you can easily let it go. You can say, well, okay, yeah, obviously some people sometimes behave in cruel ways. Sometimes I experience things in it as cruelty, but it's definitely not true that all people are always cruel. So many of the beliefs can be easily let go of in that way because it will just start to open you to realizing there are many possibilities. In fact, there are infinite possibilities. So that's just an introduction to that to that process, but it's enough for you to have to get started with and to have really good success if you persist. You don't even need anything more complicated than that if you do that sincerely, persistently. That's it. I mean, if you do that sincerely and persistently, you are guaranteed to get the results. The only question is how how long do you have to persist? And that depends. Some things not too long, right? Some change, some things happen really, really quick. Some things take a while, you know. Some things will happen like overnight. Some things take months, some things take years. But the truth is, if you work it, it works. Uh, and as I said before, there are definitely things that you can do that will enhance your results so that you can get quicker, more reliably, uh, um, confident results. Can't obviously go into all that now because uh, not time left for that. But there I have given you, in a nutshell, uh, pure gold that if you use it and apply it sincerely and persistently, will absolutely transform your life for the better, will help you to know yourself, to be happy, fulfilled, peaceful, and harmonious. That's it for today. Thanks for joining. For those who are here live, uh, I'm happy to stay in for Q&A. Oh, let me say one more thing. 
um, for people who on YouTube who have stayed this long, or even some of the people who are alive who are not presently um, participating in any of my programs or who have not already taken up taken me up on the offer, I am offering um, free introductory coaching sessions to anybody who, who's sincere about wanting to see, wanting to make positive changes in their life. Uh, and uh, if you're interested in that, then you can find out more by going to joeylot.com slash intro, I-N-T-R-O. I'll also provide the link in the uh, description below on YouTube. And uh, that's it now. Okay, so I'm gonna end this recording.